On January 14th, uh, Occupy SF Housing did an action in the Mission District where they put some people on the roof of uh, a Wells Fargo branch at 16th and Mission and they had a tent up there and it was very spectacular. And I streamed uh, that, um, that event. And um, during the course of it, uh, actually after people had left the bank and had, and had marched over to uh, the, the police station on, on Valencia Street, um, somebody was arrested, uh, somebody with the Brass Lib Liberation Orchestra. And uh, I ended up following her, her family in a taxi over to the jail, sort of waiting around. She actually ended up spending the, uh, a few days in jail, unfortunately. Uh, a few days later, I was at a meeting, an Occupy meeting. It was actually preparation for J20. And a lawyer approached me and said, uh, hey, could you take down that footage? You know, that might hurt um, you know, so-and-so who was arrested. And I said, no, <laughs> uh, I don't do that. Um, that would sort of mess, mess up my independence and credibility and, and just be really bad. So I, uh, I don't do it as a matter of course. And she was actually polite about it and said, well, all right, I understand where you're coming from, but we, we really wish you would. Several weeks later, she approaches me again, either by, by phone call or email, and says, hey, by the way, uh, we think your footage can help our client. <laughs> so can you share the file with us? And I was like, sure. You know, because they, they, they could get it on Ustream, but they wanted the, the actual file. So I was like, all right, here you go. Next day, charges dropped. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, okay. Follow what happened after her arrest, and that's something that we've been talking about uh, in terms of creating context and finding narratives um, and in the, um, I, if you guys, you can give me your emails or, but I posted this on Twitter, the outline that we have for, for this um, and there's lots of links in there that you might find relevant um, to um, journalism law and ethics and um, this article that I really liked about citizen journalism in Syria, talking mm -hmm. about how a lot of what's coming out of Syria are just these horrible <laughs> graphic images. And we're seeing these horrible graphic images totally uh, separate from any sort of context or narrative. We have no idea how these children were killed, but now we see all of these dead children and it elicits this response from us, but we don't actually know what's happening. Um, and I, I have certainly watched live streams where I feel like it's uh, Blair Witch Project, where people are screaming and there are people getting hurt, and I have no idea how this started. I have no idea what's happening, um, and uh, it's also I think a lot of people are also often um, drawn to just run toward the fire. Wherever there is the most screaming, that's where I should go, and that's not always the case. And I think that uh, your live stream that day, you decided to not go where there was the most screaming. You decided to go where there seemed like there was one human story that was worth following, um, and and that I mean I don't know how we really. That's decisions that you have to make on the fly, um, and I don't think that that's just relevant to live streaming at all. Lots of, I, uh, lots of journalists run towards the the biggest flames, and and that's not always the most interesting thing. Um, the biggest spectacle is not always the most interesting, and there's a lot of other stories that are that are going completely ignored. And gosh, isn't that relevant to us talking about how everyone is running toward Occupy, and how there are all these other stories that are being ignored that are that are really worthy of, of coverage and of conversation? I think it's important to find a narrative and follow it as, 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 as much as possible, whether you're live streaming or, or tweeting or, or writing or uh, photographing. Why why people don't want to generally hear news about Oakland at all is because mm -hmm. Oakland is perceived to be a place where bad things happen and people don't want to hear about bad things, they want to hear about good things. Mm -hmm. So they're going to go where the good things are happening. Um, and, and I think that's terrible. Editors tell me that doesn't sell. Yeah. 
that's, controversy stuff. That's not even if it's a oh look there's a scandal at the jail and this is something that I'm working on and it, it, it's not perceived as something that's going to get a lot of views. It's oh it's another oh another scandal at the jail. Here, here's another example. Um, so be, before I started teaching in San Francisco State and and doing independent journalism, which I like a lot more than I did before, but. Uh, I had been working at the Chronicle uh, for like three and a half years, and one of the first big projects I was involved in was uh, a multimedia project about uh, the 10-year high in homicides in Oakland. And uh, I remember uh, facing like incredible resistance from some of the editors, the, high, the top editors, who they were of the opinion that, well, murders happen all the time and therefore it's not news it's literally where they were coming from also you have to consider that um, it, these editors when they had their morning editorial meeting every every weekday at 10 uh, it was literally a table with a bunch of old white guys sitting around it yep. and that that is why <laughs> These decisions are made in the media. The mainstream was forced to cover Occupy long after Occupy was was covering itself. I think that uh, live streaming has kind of turned into um, cult of personality. And when live streaming started, it was not individuals doing it for themselves. It was like each Occupy site had a dedicated live streamer who was... A, who everyone acknowledged as part of that occupation. They were not independent. Um, just one... Uh, there would be one feed. One feed, was one multiple feed. people. It was like the Occupy Oakland feed. I mean, I, I know that um, the occupier who was doing that, you know, the first day at Occupy Oakland, you know, Oak Show was not out there filming. That was not what he was doing. It was an Occupy Oakland media committee live stream was set up to be the Occupy Oakland live stream. Um, the people that were doing that didn't want to do it for themselves. That they That's not what they perceived their role to be. They were doing lots of other different media things too. Um, and I know some of those people are still involved in the media committee, but they never saw themselves as independent citizen journalists. That was not what they were perceiving themselves to do. They perceived themselves as creating propaganda for the movement. Yeah. Well, I think just this sudden influx of, of, of all these people in this new situation is causing a lot of the conflict and a lot of the bad feelings. And um, I feel like an, I can help um, because I, I sort of have one foot in the, in the old world of journalism and one foot in the new, mostly in the new. But I, I feel like a lot of these issues um, and, and, and problems have been around for a while. And there are ways that people can actually come to agreements and make things work for both the journalists and the activists and the sources and, and whatnot. Um, I hope that um, as time goes on, uh, everybody's going to get better at this stuff. And so maybe there will be less fighting. Yeah. I, I, maybe I'm being too hopeful. <laughs> I think people might get used to just being on camera more uh, than ever before. I feel like that's a big part of it. I, I wasn't used to being on camera, and, and yeah, I, it makes me kind of uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> you know? um, so, so I, I can, I, I don't understand the fighting, but I, I understand uh, where, where some of that comes from. I think some of that discomfort, and yeah, you don't have privacy in public places. That just doesn't exist. But I think that, um, I think that we used to enjoy a little more anonymity mm -hmm. in public places, um, and and that's something I, I really feel like that's been totally taken away from me, and yeah. I have mixed feelings about that sometimes.